Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today's topic is the pigeonhole principle. And this is a very important proof strategy that comes up a lot in combinatorics that like our other proof strategies that we've seen so far, it's a very simple sounding principle with far reaching implications that comes in handy in a lot of different combinatorics problems. The pigeonhole principle says that if you have more pigeons than pigeonholes and you try to put every pigeon into a hole, then some hole has to contain at least two pigeons. Let's see this as an example. If I have three holes and four pigeons, and I try to put each pigeon into a hole, then we're gonna be forced to have two pigeons sharing a hole, maybe three pigeons sharing a hole. I could put all four pigeons into one hole and no in the others, for instance, but some hole has at least two pigeons. And this is an extremely important principle for showing that something exists in mathematics. It has a lot of applications, as we'll see today. Now, I wanna point out that of course, it doesn't have to be pigeons and holes. This can work for any mathematical objects. If you have more of something than another and you're trying to assign it somehow, then you have some overlap. So let's look at an example. Given six integers, let's say we have six integers, and we want to show that some two of them have the same remainder when they're divided by five. So this, it looks like it may be a pigeonhole problem because we're showing that two things, two pigeons, or in, in this case, integers, um, have the same remainder. Well, the holes here are going to be the five possible remainders that you can get when you take mod five, so zero, one, two, three, or four. And the pigeons are going to be the six integers, so we have more pigeons and holes, and by the pigeonhole principle, two of them have to have the same remainder. Two of those integers must be in the same remainder class, uh, the same congruence class mod five. So that's one example of the pigeonhole principle, where pigeons and holes were integers and remainders. And now let's look at a different example where um, it's not as obvious what the pigeons and holes are. And sometimes you have to be creative and you have to figure out what are the pigeons and what are the holes to make the pigeonhole principle apply. Say you have five integers now and we list them in order, A1 through A5. Say we wanna show that some non-empty consecutive sum of them is divisible by five. So what we mean by consecutive sum is say A2 plus A3 plus A4. That's three of the numbers in a row added up or A1 plus A2 is the first two numbers added up, or just A5, that's also by itself a consecutive sum. So again, now to show that uh, some, some consecutive sum is divisible by five, um, let's consider as pigeons the consecutive sums just starting at the beginning. So, so this is a, a bit of a tricky way of thinking about it, um, but start with zero, the empty sum, and then A1, and A1 plus A2, and A1 plus A2 plus A3, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, and A1 plus A2 plus A3 all the way up to A5. Those are six consecutive sums. And notice that their differences are actually the, the consecutive sums that we're looking for. And so for instance, the, uh, th these are six pigeons, and if we consider the holes again to be remainders mod five, well, the difference of two numbers that have the same remainder mod five has, has to be divisible by five. And so using the pigeonhole principle, we know that some two of these consecutive sums have the same remainder when you divide by five, because there's six pigeons and five holes. And as an example, you know, let's say the two consecutive sums are A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. And so this one, and let's say A1 plus A2. Say those, I mean, it could be, we don't know which pigeons it is, but say it's those two pigeons then their difference we know is divisible by five because they're in the same congruence class and their difference gives you one of these consecutive sums, A3 plus A4. And in fact, every consecutive sum of the numbers can be represented as a difference of two of these uh, initial consecutive sums starting at A1. And so we've actually created a sort of a different pigeonhole problem and then used it to show what we wanted. So when do you use the pigeonhole when it's not always obvious? One tip off to use the pigeonhole principle or see if you could use the pigeonhole principle is when you're trying to show something exists or when two of something exists or three of something exists. When something exists in a certain quantity, um, if you wanna show that, usually the methods are either proof by contradiction or pigeonhole principle. And the pigeonhole principle, if you see the right pigeons and holes, can be the solution. So here's another example, a, a sort of geometric example. Given five points inside of a unit square, here's a one by one square, show that some two of them are a distance of at most square root of two over two apart. So here's an example of five points, I just drew them randomly. We wanna show that two of them have to be square root of two over two apart, no matter how we draw the five points. 
Now, I want to go through one way that I've, I've seen students try to do this when you're first learning the pigeonhole principle. A very common mistake is uh, to, to say as a proof, well, let's try to place the points as far apart as possible. And certainly, if we place them at the corners, then those four are as far apart as possible. And then the last point to make it as far apart as possible is in the middle of the square. And then we can just measure these distances. I mean, these two are one apart, which is certainly far enough. And then, um, but then the, the middle point is only a distance of square root of two over two from the other points by the Pythagorean theorem. This is a one half, one half, square root of two over two right triangle. So that you know seems like we've argued, look, they're, they're, if we place them as far apart as possible, it can't be any worse than square root of two over two. But that's not actually a rigorous proof because you haven't shown that the, the points necessarily have to be in that configuration to be farthest apart. What if there's some pentagon where maybe that side length is bigger than square root of two over two. That's not, you know, maybe not all the four points are in the corners, but it's just some arrangement in which all five are a distance of square root of two over two apart. So instead of this kind of, you know, fiddling around to try to show that you have to force two to be close enough together, an easier way to do it and a, and a more rigorous way is to use the pigeonhole principle. So the correct way of approaching this problem is to say we have five points which we're going to treat as the pigeons. And to make holes, we need to divide this square into four regions, four regions so that if two of them are in the same region, they're guaranteed to be at most square root of two over two apart. So you want each region to have diameter square root of two over two. Diameter means the largest distance between any two points in that region. And the way to divide it up into four regions is just by dividing it up into one half by one half squares. And then of the five points, there's only four pigeons. So two of the points must be in one of these boxes, say the lower left, it could be any one of them. But then each of these boxes has maximal distance squared to two over two between any two points in those boxes. And so by the pigeonhole principle, we can complete our proof by saying, you know, we've let this be the pigeons. There's, these are the holes, there's five pigeons and four holes. So by the pigeonhole principle, some region contains at least two of the points. And so those two points must be no more than square root of two over two apart from each other. So now let's go to the version two of the pigeonhole principle, which is when you wanna show that not only are there two pigeons in some hole, maybe you wanna show there's three pigeons in some hole or four. So what this version says is if there are at least KN plus one pigeons and N holes that you wanna put them in, then some hole must contain at least K plus one pigeons. So here's an example where we have two holes and seven pigeons. And so we can put, if we're trying to distribute them evenly, intuitively, if we put these three pigeons in the first hole and the next three pigeons in the, in the other hole, and then this seventh pigeon, well, it has to go somewhere. So there's at least four pigeons in some hole. Um, even if you distributed them differently, there's always gonna be at least four pigeons in one hole, no matter how you put the pigeons in these two holes. And so this generalized principle can be used to generalize some of our other results and also used to um, prove more facts about existence. So let's look at another example. Say we wanna show that among any 17 positive integers, there exists a subset of four of them that all have the same remainder when divided by five. So we're gonna make the pigeons, these 17 integers, just like in the first problem that we did. And the holes are again, the five remainders mod five. And now using version two of the pigeonhole principle, we can say, basically, if we wanted to try to divide 17 evenly among five holes, what happens and how many pigeons are we forced to have in at least in one of the holes? Well, 17 can be written as three times five plus two. So there's, um, you can fill sort of three in each hole, um, but then you have two left over. So that's greater than three times five plus one, which is the minimum by the pigeonhole principle version two that you need. Um, and to conclude that some hole contains at least three plus one pigeons, which is four pigeons. And that's exactly what we wanted to show here, meaning some remainder contains at least four of the positive integers in its equivalence class mod five. So now let's wrap up with a proof of the pigeonhole principle. We're going to prove version two, and, and the first version can be deduced from version two. Um, it's sort of the, the smaller version of that. And this is a really good example of proof by contradiction, which is another proof technique that we've been focusing on this week. So 
to prove the version two by contradiction, we want to show that um, there are at least kn plus, if there's kn plus one pigeons and you're placing them at the n holes, we have at least k plus one in some holes. So we assume for contradiction that every hole has at most k pigeons in it in some way of, of placing them. And if we can do that, then by counting the number of pigeons in each hole, well, there's only k pigeons, at most k pigeons in each hole, so there's at most k times n pigeons total because there's only n holes. And that contradicts the assumption that there are actually at least k, k n plus one holes. So it's a fairly simple proof by contradiction um, with basic counting principles, but it's, again, it's just a very useful principle that comes up in a lot of contexts, and we don't wanna have to do this proof by contradiction every time we wanna use the pigeonhole principle. So now it's your turn. Now you try to show that among any 10 points placed in a unit square, there have to exist some three of them, some three points that are all within square root of two over two distance from each other. So this is very similar to the problem we did about five points in the unit square, except now we're gonna use the version two of the principle to, to try to find three points that are all within some region. And that's all for today and we'll see you next time.